Hello everybody, Mailman here from Goat Productions. In this one, we're going to talk about big hogs. Hunter took a really nice boar the other night, and I'm going to talk about what I do whenever I get a boar on camera or we see a boar out there and, and the pattern we do, how we get it. Got the 22 mag. We always carry this with us. We're out there actually right now setting up the deer hunting areas. What I do is I look for pin oaks right now. Pin oaks are dropping everywhere, and I like to put corn because we can bait by the pin oaks because I want them deer or them hogs to come right in front of the camera, tell me what's in the area. So we go into this area, we set up our blind, we get a blind back in there, got the seats in there, and me and Hunter are back in there, got him helping me. Always take the 22 mag with me in those situations. Whenever we're coming out, we may stumble upon hogs and you always got to have it with you. I got the Thor 4 on top. We're coming out back to the vehicle and Hunter spots a boar right by the vehicle. But this boar was out looking for sows, and he he hightailed it. We chased him. We caught him one other time. We seen him. So two times we seen him that night. We did not get a shot on him, but I knew he was in the area. Knew a big boar was in the area. So now I got all my cameras out. I put extra cameras out. And the next time I'm back in there, I pull the card, and that boar has hit my deer hunting spots for the kids. Now, here's what I do. Made videos on stacking baits, and, and you want to keep them in the area. So what I do is, I love to stack two bait spots close to each other. I got a feeder at about, I'd say 50 yards from the blind. It's a good archery or a good crossbow shot for the kids. And then what I do is I have another spot about 20 yards away from the blind. I overload. So we're talking about overloading. I just go out there and I spread, spread a bag of corn out by another camera. I got two cameras there watching and you're going to see two different views of this boar that boar came to those cameras both different cameras now you're going to see when there's two that close to each other they're 50 yards apart but sometimes they'll come to one sometimes they come to the other there's another reason i got two spots right beside each other we'll talk about that on the hunt but i like to have a feeder there that puts a little bit out that keeps them coming back a little bit at a time then i like to overload i want them animals I want them boars to come in there or them hogs to come in there and think they hit the jackpot. I want to have so much corn on one of my spots, so much bait, that they cannot eat it all in one setting. They leave and they come back. When I start getting cameras like that and videos like that, I know when that hog leaves, I want them to leave that one area and know that there's corn there. They're going to go lay down and they're going to remember that there's corn there. That's how I keep them, keep bringing them in. They're going to bed close, keep it close to a bedding area where they like to bed. So this boar, we know it's in the area, seen it that night, went and pulled the cards, put out another bag of corn right there just to see, pulled the card, come home, got those two videos. The best thing about those videos was that hog was coming at 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. He'd come back at 11. He'd come back at 3 in the morning. He'd come back right before daylight. I knew he was staying in that area, hitting those spots over and over again. Time those feeders at specific times, 12 o'clock midnight, 2 in the morning, 5 in the morning. They hear that. They come back. I want them to keep coming back to that spot over and over again. Let them go look for his sows. Come back to that spot over and over again. So now we're stalking in to that area. After we, I think we may have deer hunted that day. I'm not sure exactly what that, but I, I think we deer hunted and then we went over and come in to get specifically to get that boar. Stock it in, come up over the hill. Your setup is very big. I got a spot where we got across the fence and then we go up over the hill and there's a tree kind of hangs down. It's an old um, cedar tree and my blind is underneath the cedar tree. But as we approach that cedar tree, I can see both of my bait spots. That big hog is in that bait spot. He's in there. We see him. Hunter has a thermal scanner now. I have a thermal scanner now. We're watching him. We're moving in and we're trying to get a clear shot. The blind's a perfect shot, but we're trying to come in and get that clear shot on that hog. But you're going to see some video we'll throw up here first. Uh, it's, it's pretty thick. Hunter can't get through there. We're shooting a 22 mag, so we want to wait. One of the things I always tell Hunter is, if something, something goes wrong, I got this boar patterned. We're moving in. Everything's good with the hog except for a deer snorts downwind of us. So we're looking at the hog straight away. To our left, a deer starts to snort. That's always trouble with a big hog. He eventually pops up. He goes back into the thick stuff. I'm going to show you what I did here on the next video. 
That hog is back there standing in that thick stuff. He has no idea what's going on. He just knows that that deer snorted. I start to grunt a little bit. I sound like a hog. And that whole boar lays down. He's still in the thicker stuff, but he lays down. So we're standing there. Now we line up to where he, when he stands up, Hunter's going to be able to drop him. Unfortunately, a raccoon now moves in and spooks that boar. That boar is now spooked because all of a sudden that boar runs off and we see that raccoon right there. He's laying there taking a nap. That raccoon comes up and spooks that boar out of there. Now, some guys would say we're, you're done with that day. We did not spook it and it did not wind us. So you got to kind of rely on that. What I then did, we jumped in that blind. Got in that blind about an hour later, not even an hour later, 45 minutes later. Here's why I like stacking those baits again. You got that big corn pile that he knew when he left, he knew that there was still bait there. Now I got my feeder down there, probably, like I said, about 50, 60 yards. I know two spots. He may think this one's not safe. He pops out at that other one. So Hunter's getting ready to shoot that hog. We're looking at it. Its head really wasn't turned the right way, and it went off to the right. He didn't get a shot at it. Stay calm. We got this boar pattern. We're going to get him. If we don't get him tonight, we're going to get him another night. We sit there and wait, and that boar circles the whole way around us. We hear him go back behind us. We're in a blind. Keeps our scent in there, and that boar circles around and comes right into that, about 20 yards away from the blind. Hunter actually shoots offhand. I have the swagger bipod on here. I had a tripod in there aiming at the longer shot. Hunter just goes offhand, drops this boar right there. Nice video, drops it right in there. Nice big boar, actually takes it right in the eyeball. So it was a great shot. It was a great hunt. It was a patient hunt. I knew because I stacked those two places there. That boar really liked that spot I overloaded. He had the feeder down there when that feeder went off at midnight. So if we had to wait, that feeder's gonna go off. He's going to move into that in that spot he think is he thinks is safe. So it was a smart hog. He's down there. He went down in there, took a nap a little bit, come up to the other spot, made a circle around us. But we still took him just because we stayed there and we know how those big boars act. They know there's food there. They're coming. They're going to come in there. So I overload it. Long as they don't smell you, snort at you, and run away, then it's kind of over for the night maybe a couple hours, but if, if a deer spooks them, if something else spooks them, they're going to come back. They're going to come back within an hour because they're laying down there and they know all that food's up there. So check out this kill shot and stay tuned for much more. We got deer season going heavy. Going to have a lot for you.